fellow travelers. My name is Silo, your cosmic narrator, and this is Higher Strangeness. Thank you for joining me. Tonight, I want to discuss UFOs and nuclear weapons. How for decades, nuclear test sites and other nuclear facilities have been monitored by extraterrestrials. I want to discuss the shocking testimonies, there's over a hundred, by the way, and the damning declassified documents that prove it. But before all that isotopic insanity, let's smoke about it. What better weed to accompany aliens in the atom than atomic haze? I felt this subject deserved the perfect pairing of something euphoric and, well, kind of out of this world. Love the way this stuff makes me feel. <laughs> Cheers. So without further ado, consider this. Since 1973, a man named Robert L. Hastings has interviewed more than 150 former or retired U.S. military personnel regarding their UFO encounters at nuclear laboratories, bomb storage depots, weapons test areas, and ICBM sites. These testimonies, valiant and very verifiable, weave the undeniable evidence that we are being visited by extraterrestrials and that they are interested in what we have to say, like it or not. Robert Hastings wrote a book called UFOs and Nukes, which subsequently was turned into a documentary. I assure you, if there is any skeptic left in you after reading this book or watching this film, there won't be. I consider this book one of the most well-researched and convincing accounts of contact I have ever read. Robert is excruciatingly thorough, and every witness is vetted and verified. It really doesn't get much better than this in the world of ufology. So, let's get to the meat of it. In December of 1948, unidentified aerial objects described as, quote, flying saucers were sighted at the Los Alamos Atomic Laboratory in New Mexico. And that was just the beginning. Declassified U.S. government documents released via the Freedom of Information Act confirm that for decades, U.S. nuclear facilities were being visited by UFOs with unnerving frequency. I mean, this must have drove those military dudes nuts. These craft actually visited every single ICBM location in the United States. So good. They were also spotted at the Hanford Plutonium Processing Plant in Washington, uh, the Oak Ridge Nuclear Labs in Tennessee, codenamed Site X, and the list goes on and on and on. The unedited documentary is actually over four hours long. I mean, the testimonies are endless. This thing is a beast. In late March of 1967, at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana, Robert Salas, first lieutenant officer on site that night, had his own experience. One of his topside observers called down to report strange lights in the sky, making unusual maneuvers just above the base. A few minutes later, he called down again, emphatic that something strange was happening. He said a large, red, glowing object was hovering above the front gate. At that instant, the nuclear missiles began inexplicably malfunctioning, ultimately going offline, meaning they couldn't be launched. And they stayed that way until the craft shot off into space. This kind of monkey business happened at almost every nuclear facility inside the United States. There are literally over 100 stories I could tell just like this one, each one more credible and incredible than the last. 
The book and the documentary are truly captivating and well worth your time. And we weren't the only ones. Documents out of Russia uncover similar scenarios at Soviet missile sites. And their officers have come forward as well. Now, before you begin thinking this was some mass hallucination or hoax, keep in mind, most of these officers were explicitly ordered to not speak about the event and were required to sign non-disclosure agreements. These guys have been sitting on their stories for decades. They were too afraid to open their mouths. Their government threatened them and told them to tell no one ever or else. Imagine sitting on that information, knowing that hundreds of other officers probably were too, and not being able to say a damn thing about it. But I digress. So let me give you one more anecdote out of this voluminous volume before I sign off. You're going to have to go research the rest on your own. I could be here for hours talking about this one book. I'm just your modest messenger. Please continue on your own. So funny enough, this next case is actually still classified as top secret. In the fall of 1964 at Vandenberg Air Force Base, former Air Force officer Dr. Robert Jacobs was in charge of filming a missile launch from a mountaintop on California's Big Sur coastline. Shortly after Jacobs and his crew filmed the launch, he was ordered into a private meeting with two CIA agents to watch the film he had just shot. So the missile launched, the nose cone separated, and the dummy warhead came out, flying at around 7,000 miles per hour, right on the periphery of space, just as planned. But what happened next was definitely not in the program. Suddenly, a, quote, flying disc enters the frame, cruising at the exact same speed as the warhead, and in polar orbit, it begins shooting beams of light at the warhead as it flies around it. The UFO then shoots off into space, and the dummy warhead tumbles away, just like that. A warning shot. Needless to say, Lieutenant Jacobs was ordered to never speak of the incident again and was assured that it never happened. I've included a couple links below so you guys can check out the abridged version of the documentary here on YouTube and also visit Robert Hastings' website uh, where you can research these events on your own and purchase his book uh, UFOs and Nukes if you like. It really is worth it. In a way, I think it reveals a little bit about who they are and what their intentions might be. And that gives me hope. Unless, of course, you're a farmer just protecting your crop or watering hole. Um, But all kidding aside, I know for a fact that some of them are here to help us as we in turn are helping them. The sooner we realize that we are a species among many others in a very busy galactic park, entangled by interdimensional highways, the better off we will be, and the sooner we can get up to speed. Evolutionarily speaking, of course. Of course. I would like to thank my art collective and colleagues here at Music of Wolves, my Adam boys, Earthship, our self-sustaining Earth campaign focused on communities and gatherings, Magic, casting our spell on cannabis, Vimana, and finally Scorpio, our musical star from another star. Like them, I am here to share, advise, and to help you prepare for what is coming all the while attempting to entertain you during the process, which I hope I was successful in doing. Please like, subscribe, and share. We are a spirited community of artists and practitioners who humbly hold out our hats. Donadago hai, or until we meet again.